Sup all, JC3 here, the baller of YouTube The General. Welcome to Topic Tackle. My take for today is on how Puma is getting back into the basketball sneaker game for the first time in 20 years by signing top NBA draft picks DeAndre Ayton, Marvin Bagley, and Michael Porter Jr. They've also signed Zaire Smith, an explosive wing with a 41 and a half inch vertical measured at the combine. They're making big moves to revamp their basketball line and we'll break down how they got these big names to come on board. Remember to check out my basketball videos on Kawhi Leonard and the NBA Finals, and leave a thumbs up on this video and your feedback in the comments down below for more Topic Tackle coming soon. Let's get started. First, it was Marvin Bagley, then DeAndre Ayton, and as I was putting this video together, Michael Porter Jr., three of who are going to be top 10 picks in the NBA draft that chose to go a different route with their footwear and apparel deals. Puma Basketball has made a splash as they're re-entering the basketball footwear game for the first time since 1998 when they signed Vince Carter. Way before then in the 1970s was Walt Clyde Frazier who wore the Puma Clyde shoes during his playing days with the Knicks and Cavs. Puma recently signed Frazier to a lifetime deal to be their brand's icon. They've also hired Jay-Z to be the creative director and now with celebrities like him, Rihanna, and Big Sean, they can attract other big name athletes and celebrities to the brand. Before their three major signings from this year's NBA draft, Puma's lone star athlete was Usain Bolt, who spoke highly of the Aiton signing. So we get it, Puma has a decent collection of star appeal, but come on now, they're no Nike or Adidas, so how did they get so many top picks to come on board? After all, these three guys in Aiton, Bagley, and Porter all sported the swoosh in college and Bagley in particular was fond of the KD line and wears number 35 in large part to Kevin Durant being one of his favorite players. From reading through interviews on a Bleacher Report article, the ability to start fresh was a big factor for many of them. Bagley said, I had a vision when I first decided to sign, which is that someone has to start it off and build it up where people would want to buy their stuff and wear the shoes. That's what's exciting to me is being able to help do that, be a part of that and build something special. Bagley's emphasis on signing with Puma is building a brand and going against the trends. Aiton's perspective is a little different in that he grew up in the Bahamas and isn't foreign to Puma brand. Puma will most likely give him opportunities to host camps in the Bahamas and give back to his community. And of course, we can't skip over his famous quote, Nike is Nike, Adidas is Adidas. I played in their circuits and stuff like that, but now it's a business. You don't just want product. You're not a kid anymore. You're really trying to get bank. That's about it. Aiton doesn't care if people think he's signing with the brand for money. As he said, of course, if Adidas is going to give you like two mil and Nike is going to give you one mil, who would you pick? If you have a history or chemistry with Nike, I can see that. But when it comes to business, business is business. All three players signed multi-year footwear and apparel deals with the brand. Bagley's deal was rumored to be the largest since KD's first deal with Nike. And Aiton's was also for a large sum of money. We could just say that. We are expecting Porter's deal to be similar. Both Bagley and Aiton also mentioned the importance of playing in shoes that can be worn on and off the court and with Puma's reveal of their first basketball shoe set to release in fall 2018 this looks like an accurate expectation from the two. After Bagley and Aiton signings a lot of talk was about how the general public won't buy shoes that are featured on two big men but with the Porter signing Puma just crushed that assumption. Porter if healthy is in my opinion the player with the highest ceiling in this draft and if LeBron and KD's domination of the league for the past decade has told you anything it's that tall small forwards that can shoot three and handle the ball are the key to winning championships. Puma just signed that type of guy in Porter and if he can stay healthy and rise to an elite level, his shoe will sell. Now we wait for the tech specs of Puma's upcoming basketball shoe. It'll be interesting to see if they implement the jamming technology. Similar to Boost, jamming is made of a bunch of tiny styrofoam like beads called energy beads. In their jamming running model that released at the beginning of this year, the beads were encased within the midsole but not molded together like Boost. Instead, they were free floating. Midsole technologies are taking over the market as as the standard EVA foam is starting to get phased out more and more, so we'll see if Puma can incorporate this into their upcoming basketball models and if it will be comfortable. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Does Puma have a shot to become a top basketball brand? Remember to subscribe, like, leave your feedback in those comments down below. We'll be back with more Topic Tackle coming soon. JC3, out!